Greetings and permutations. Welcome to Geekus Maximus. This is Dave speaking. Today I'm going to show you how to install Android on Hyper-V. Um, there's several versions. Um, the one, the official version from the Android website is version 9, but I wanted to use a later version and it looks like the only place to get it is from Bliss OS's website, so um, which actually is Android version 13. So first you want to go to uh, blissos.org and click on the download link. I've already done that here. And you can see the different versions. We'll show you which um, what they're based on. So version 14 is Android 11, 15 is Android 12 L, and 16 is Android 13, version 13. And you can click on the SourceForge link. We're using uh, this version here with gapps. And when you click that link, you'll end up at SourceForge and you can download your file there. Um, I've already done that, so I don't need to really walk through that. Anywho, so here's what the image name is, the image file. So let's get started here. So we want to just create a new virtual machine and give it a good name. Let's OS. Uh, that's good enough for now. Pick generation one of the hardware virtualization. Hit next. Um, get a, give it some memory. Uh, 4096 or 4 gigs is typical, but I usually like to go a little higher than that. So I'm going to put in um, 8 gigs. Um, we want to uncheck this Use Dynamic Memory for this Virtual Machine box. Uncheck that. You can pick your networking here. Now, actually, we don't really need this here because we will end up deleting this. So uh, it, it'll stay on there, but uh, I'll show you what I mean here. Uh, create a virtual disk. Give it a size, say 48 gigs is a good size, probably overkill. Hit next. Click on install an operating system from a bootable DVD or CD-ROM. Select image file. Pick the image file we just downloaded. Hit next. Everything looks good there. Go ahead and click finish. Um, the next thing we want to do here is change some settings here. First we want to make sure it does boot from the CD, which uh, by default it should. Um, we don't really need the security here. Memory is good. We will add two processors. Go ahead and apply. And back down here, the only thing we need to do is get rid of this. And we want to use the legacy adapter. So I'll go ahead and remove this. And apply. Go up to Add Hardware. Legacy Network Adapter. Click Add. Hit Apply. And that's it for this section here. Okay, now we can go ahead and start this. Connect and then start, either or. And we want to select the fourth option here. And hit Enter. And select C. Hit OK. Uh, we want to use CF disk um, because this is a virtual machine. Um, I haven't tried this yet, but uh, I know this works this way. You can try that on your own if you like. Label type, because we're not using GPT, we want to use the DOS. And now uh, you can see the drive. Make sure everything looks good. So we want to create a new um, partition. Um, 
the mouse doesn't quite yet work, so I'll just hit enter over the new selection. Um, partition the entire thing. Set it to primary. Mark it as bootable. And select right. Confirm it. Press enter. And now we can quit. It will restart the installer and it will select the partition that we just created. So all you have to do now is just hit OK. And then format it to ext4. Hit OK. Give it a name. Good enough. Hit OK. Confirm formatting. And we'll go ahead and add the OTA update. We want to install the bootloader. And this takes a little bit. This step takes a little while, so I'll hit pause. Okay, that is done. Next thing we want to do is go ahead and select Reboot. If you run this right now, for some reason it locks up, at least on my machine. So I'll select Reboot. But before I hit OK, I want to go up to the uh, media and eject that ISO image disk and then verify it's not there. Okay, we're good. And now click OK to reboot. Now after this portion, this is where we sometimes run into problems. Oh, maybe I have to hit... No. There it goes. Okay. Excellent. Now we want to, uh, we don't want to pick the first up. Oh, shoot, it just picked the first option. <laughs> um, I wasn't fast enough. Okay. Um, what a lot of people run into is uh, it get locks up at this screen um, because it picked the first option, which is really for physical hardware. So I'll go ahead and turn this off and ignore the warning here. I'll restart it and this time I will show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and restart this. I want to quickly select the uh, there VM options and then we want to select no hardware acceleration and hit enter or click. I think the mouse works here. I'm not sure. Nope, not yet. So let's just hit enter with the enter key. And now it should properly load. There we go. Okay. When you see the flower, you got everything good. I call that a flower. I'm not sure what you call it. And that is loading. So, uh, yeah. And, uh, I'm going to hit pause and wait till we get to a screen here. Okay, we are back here. Now you can go ahead and configure as normal. And while this is loading, um, I can review. I have another video already on the site, on the channel, that uh, shows you how to remotely access any operating system from uh, Hyper-V Manager. It basically gives you access to this window. And you might want to check that 
that way you can uh, uh, log in with a re uh, typical remote desktop client. I'm going to prove that everything's working here. Main thing to check is the network. And we will skip all this here. Skip. And we'll skip that. And we trust everybody. And we'll go ahead and use this. Grant permissions. And then you got all this other stuff here. I thought I just did that. Okay. Um, am I not doing something here? Oh, here we go. Okay. So let's make sure we are officially online. So we'll search for something. News. And in my town, we are getting ready for the Derby. Breaking news. Okay. Bad news. Any good news here? Um, no. <laughs> Okay, well, it is loading, so we are connected to the internet, so that's all you need to know. Um, anything else? That should be it. So, uh, And you can, of course, shut this down without a button. Just click up near the top and then uh, just power off. And that's it. That's how you load Android 13 via Bliss OS version onto Hyper-V, and it works pretty well. And I've already loaded um, this on here um, and loaded Android 9. Okay, that's it for today. That should help. I hope this helps somebody else out there who probably tried running uh, virtual machines with Android before using, say, VirtualBox, which runs pretty slow. Hyper-V is nice and fast. This machine is about seven years old, or six, yeah, about seven years old, 2019. And so it's running pretty, pretty well, considering. So that is all. Please like and subscribe and um, comment, please, if you have any um, better ways of doing this or can find a copy of the ISO for version 15. I believe we're up to 15 now in Android uh, or any other things that you might, um, any suggestions for other videos for like this. Please let me know in the comments below and I will see you or you will see me or you will see a video next time in the future. Thank you for watching.